Hi guys and welcome back to Miss Clark Does Science. Today we're going to be continuing and finishing our 2.2 year 11 topic of cell division and stem cells. Last time we talked about cell division and this time we're going to be moving on to stem cells. So we're going to be talking about ENF uh, of the spec points here today. So firstly then the definition of stem cells. So stem cells are undifferentiated cells that have the capacity to develop into specialised cells. So what does the word undifferentiated mean? That means that they have not, so un, become different uh, cells. So they are not different cells. So they are like the base cell. They're the cell that all other cells are created from. And they therefore have the capacity to develop into something that we call specialised cells. So an example of this here. So we have stem cells here. They can become more of themselves through mitosis, so become more stem cells. Or they can become differentiated into different types of cells that make up our bodies and all living organisms. So here we have a neuron. Here we have some blood cells, muscle cells, maybe uh, some like lining cells here, maybe immune cells here, not sure, but these are all different types of specialised cells. So the idea that is that m multiple cellular organisms contain specialised cells for different functions. The whole point of specialising your cells is so that each cell can perform different functions and you don't have kind of one cell doing everything itself. It's a bit more efficient to kind of split up the load into different types. And it's more efficient because they are adapted to different functions. So neurons are all about sending signals around um, to other cells. Therefore, they have these long cellular bodies called axons. But this is moving on to A level. Whereas red blood cells have this dip in the middle so that they can carry more oxygen. So these are all different types of specialized cells. So once they've become specialised, these, these specialised cells have lost the ability to differentiate. So they cannot act like stem cells and become other cells from here. That doesn't happen. They, other stem cells have to perform that role. So why are stem cells important? So scientists can actually use stem cells to replace cells and treat diseases. So the different types of stem cells, then there are two main types. There's adult stem cells. These are found in adult organisms, usually in and amongst tissue cells. There'll be some stem cells there to help replenish other cells. And then you also have embryonic stem cells. So where life um, is born in, um, in embryos, they have to have stem cells at the beginning of life to differentiate and become all the other cells needed to create a baby. And they're only found in early embryos. So you can imagine that these stem cells are really useful in scientific research because if they can differentiate into other cells, you could start replacing damaged cells in diseases. Um, you could start treating things like uh, le leukemia and, and all sorts of different diseases can be treated using stem cells. But there, there are some considerations and ethical issues around the use of stem cells and we're just going to go through these now. So we'll go through embryonic stem cells first. Embryonic stem cells are really easy to obtain, so we can kind of extract them directly from um, embryos. They can also become any other cell. So these are kind of base stem cells and they're really useful uh, to create any other cell from. But the problems with this is that you must destroy an embryo to obtain these stem cells. Um, and obviously there's a lot of moral and religious uh, ethical issues surrounding the destruction of an embryo. Um, is it going to become a life? Is that the same as a life? Um, and all these things as well. There's also no informed consent, obviously, for that for that potential life uh, to give up their stem cells. And um, it, there's also a bit of a dilemma around commercialising uh, the use of stem cells, so gaining profit or gaining money or having any kind of money transaction involved uh, in the extraction of stem cells. And there's also the potential for host rejection. So if you're going to put these stem cells into somebody else, they will have a different genetic material to that original person. So there is a potential for rejection here and it not working altogether. Now the spec specifically calls out this point here, the bolded and italics one. So you definitely need to remember that a problem with uh, embryonic stem cells is that you must destroy an embryo to do so which has moral and religious issues the rest are there in case basically it becomes a six question answer in the exam and you might need to write a few more points about um, fleshing out why there's so many issues surrounding them but if you're just going to remember one remember that one so for adult stem cells then, the pros are that there's no rejection. So if you're using cells from your own body, from your own adult, then you're not going to have any rejection from different genetic material there because they'll be the same. 
So you don't need a donor. So you can use this from your own body. You can take a stem cell from, uh, let's say, your bone um, stem cells and use it for making blood, your own blood cells or something like that. Another pro is that there's no tissue typing needed. And tissue typing is really just where they are testing the types of tissue and whether they'll match or not. So in embryonic stem cells, you might take a tissue from the person that needs the stem cells and from the person that's donating the stem cells. And then you'll do an assessment um, in a lab as to whether we think that there's going to be any rejection. Whereas you don't need to do that for adult stem cells. Some of the cons, though, um, they cannot become all other cells. They have limited differentiating properties. Uh, sometimes bone stem cells can only become other bone cells. Um, they're not kind of fully, fully um, undifferentiated. So that's one of the issues with adult stem cells. They're also a little bit less stable over time and hard to isolate as well compared to embryonic stem cells. So that so all the pros and cons of stem cells and the ethical issues surrounding their use for treatment and disease. And that's the end of this video and this topic actually. So it's quite a short one and next time we'll be moving on to DNA and inheritance. I recognise that um, there are some overlap in these two topics. So if you are struggling with the last two videos, I would strongly recommend uh, holding off and, and watching the 2.3 spec videos as well because that goes through the dna structure a little bit better and hopefully that will make sense for both of them